If you got R downloaded and installed on your laptop and now you're looking to use it more in Power BI, well in this week's video I'm going to show you how to use R in Power Query to make a few changes to a data set. So let's get started. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe below and also hit that notification bell icon so you're notified of future videos. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to use R in Power Query to make a few changes to a data set by adding a couple of columns that we might want to use within our uh, report or dashboard. So let's get started and head straight over to my laptop. So first of all, we're just going to head straight into transform data. And what we're going to find is I've already loaded in a data set that I've used previously in videos, uh, looking at tra uh, training load data um, and this data is all uh, fake, fictional. I've created it using a Excel spreadsheet, uh, but you can find the videos I've used this in in the card in the top right corner. Uh, but all we've gotten here is a few dates, some training load data around distances that we've covered and max velocities. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to use uh, R to add a couple of extra columns that we don't have present in this. Uh, and we could do that easily just by using an add column and a custom column here in Power Query. But I'm going to use this to just show a couple of the basics of R that you might want to use in the future. So the final version of the data we're going to look at is we're going to have uh, added along the right hand side here some per minute values. So this is just easier to use and something you might want to use to look at intensities uh, from training sessions or games, whatever it might be. And this just allows you to not have to create this data set or these data points, I should say, using DAX uh, within your report or dashboard. The data will already be loaded straight into your data sets. So to do that, we're going to use R. So I'm going to head over to this extra data set I've already duplicated. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to transform in the ribbon on the top left. And we're going to hit R, run R script right here in the middle. And this is going to bring up an extra window and in that window it's just going to have a blank script essentially uh, that it's wanting to run. Now it's going to give you a few things here already. Uh, the first one in this commented section here is just telling you that the data uh, in that table behind the window is going to be held in a data set or a data frame called data set. So this is what we're going to use throughout the script to make changes to it. The next thing is you're going to make sure that R is running on your laptop and you're going to see that at the bottom here by seeing where the R installation is installed on your laptop. So as you can see here, I've got R 4.2.2 installed in program files. If you need to make any of those changes, just head over to your options and your settings and you can find the video I recently posted in the card above to just show you how to install and get started with R. But some of the first things you're going to need to do is do anything that you would normally do in R to run the script in Power BI. Essentially, Power BI is going to send this R script over to R on your laptop to run it and then bring the data set back in. So the first thing we're going to need to do is bring in a library to help us with this, to help us manipulate our data. And for us, we're going to use Tidyverse. And Tidyverse is um, a simple library or a package that has a bunch of different uh, other packages, I guess, within it uh, that help you with the different functions to just be able to transform, manipulate, and adjust your data sets. So we're going to write tidyverse there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to work with our data set. So first of all, we're just going to go data set. And we're just going to use uh, another function or another thing that comes with the tidyverse called the pipe. Now the pipe just allows us to chain together different functions or different steps of a process so that we can make this code a lot more readable and easier to look at in the future. So we're going to do that. We're just going to hit enter and I'm going to add a tab just to adjust where our cursor is. And then we're going to use our first function called mutate. Now mutate just allows us to add in new columns, adjust columns, or do anything we need to to our data set. And before I continue, I'm just going to go back one step and say data sets or tables within R are actually called data frames. You'll find this in a lot of coding uh, languages where data frame relates to the rows and table uh, columns of a table, but they call them the data frame. So in other concepts in those coding for languages are 
lists and vectors and they all just relate to say a single column or set of data that is not uh, laid out in such a nice way. That's one way of looking at it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to create a, a single column. We're just going to call it new and we're going to go equals and then we're just going to use the number one. It's going to run this first and we're just going to see what we get back. So if we click OK, this is now essentially Power BI sending that, that script to R to run. Uh, and we're going to wait for this to get loaded. All right, now our, our R script is run. But what we can see is it hasn't actually returned anything. And you're probably thinking, why is that? So if we go back into our R script, what we do need to do is we need to uh, define our data set as something. So if we do this here, we're going to go data like that. So now we're going to call data as our data set with these new additions. So if we now go OK here and we'll let this R script run in, in R again and return the results. And you can see it's now starting to load something. It's found something in that data set or in that script and it's returned it. So there's a few things we can see here already. First of all, our date column is no longer dates. And then second of all, we now have a new column on the right here called new and it's just the number one. So those are the two changes that have happened after running this R script. The first thing we're going to do is we will adjust this date here to work the way we want it to. And then we'll also make some additions here to get the data we want. So the first thing we're going to do is the way I figured this workaround uh, is to go back a few steps and change our date here into a text column. So we'll go insert. But what we will do is just replace the current step. And then we'll let that load and then eventually that change will take place. And then now if we head back to data, we can see that our column is now back to the way we wanted it. It is a data, a date column, but it's stored as text. Uh, we can make one change in our R script. And that's what we will do is we will go here. Um, and so you can see we're back to where we were and we're going to add in another package called library and go library and we're going to call this one Lubridate. Lubridate is another package that's kind of in the wider tidyverse, um, but you would need to install it separately. So install.packages Lubridate. Uh, this is just a great uh, package to allow you to work with dates. And what we could do here is we can just add another row and we're going to go date equals and then for this one, our dates are stored as a day, month, year. So we just need to go DMY date. And then we will add an extra pipe and we'll go OK again. And now that script is going to be running on R again. And we're just going to click down a step here on our applied steps. And we'll wait for that to load in. And now we can see that our date column is stored as a date. So now that's kind of fixed that one up. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a real simple one to add in uh, our meters per minute. So let's do that one here. So we're going to go meters per minute. And we're just going to go equals. And that's just going to start uh, or call our column something like we just did before. And then for this one, we're just going to go uh, to, uh, we need to change, oh, wrong button. We need to double hit it. Uh, we need to give our, uh, I guess, enclose our um, our data set or our column within. So we're gonna go total distance. I'm gonna hit this twice again. And then divide, we can just using the backslash, uh, just be able to divide by, in my example, session duration. And then we're just gonna go okay. And then again, we're just gonna wait for that uh, to load. So we're gonna see that data set run in the background. So if we click on data again, now that it's finished loading across the top, we'll see meters per minute here on the right. Nice and simple. So what we will do, and I have already done this previously, obviously, is I'm going to grab uh, some other steps off the side uh, and I'm going to add those in. So now when we want to add extra columns all at once, all you need to do is just add a comma and add the rest in. So I've got the rest of these here. Um, you can see each of them added in. Um, to, to calculate those. I'm just going to actually delete this first one. 
but I'd loaded that already. So we've got meters per minute, our high speed running, uh, our very high speed running sprint, and then also player load. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna watch that data set load and run again across the top. And then we're just gonna hit data and we're gonna see there has actually been an error here occur. Uh, and this is a good one to figure out or help us to look through that. So now we can look through and try and figure out where has our error occurred. And we can see here there is an unexpected comma, oh, sorry, no, comma, uh, bracket. So we can just go back to our data set and we can see we've got one bracket here, which is good, but we've got two here. So I just need to delete one of those, click okay. That's a mistake from my part on our copy and paste. And now we can see our data sets loaded. And we can see each of our values here off to the right. So this is a really simple uh, R script that you could use just to add extra columns. Uh, this isn't obviously gonna be the ending of what you would want, uh, but there might be other things that you can do with R that you can't currently do with Power Query. So I really hope uh, you found this video useful. And if you did, remember to make sure you hit like and subscribe below. Uh, and I'll see you next time where we'll continue to uh, use R in Power BI and try and make our lives a little bit more efficient. See you next time.